girls and boys. Today we're going to read all about elephants. The author of this book is Kate Riggs. She wrote a nonfiction book called Elephants. The title gives us a big clue about the topic. Elephants by Kate Riggs. Oh, here's our table of contents. I love how in these books, in the background of the table of contents, they show us a close-up picture, a photograph taken with a camera, of the skin of the animal that they're talking about. I knew elephants had wrinkles, but I've never gotten to get close enough to them to really look at their skin. Hmm. So the table of contents will tell us the key details that we're going to find out in this book and what page we would find those key details on. If I wanted to read about their bumpy skin and floppy ears, I would go to page 10. If I wanted to read just about baby elephants, I would read page 14. A nonfiction book, I could start on any page I'd like. There's no characters, there's no setting or events or beginning, middle, and end, so I don't have to start on page one. I think I will, so I don't miss any of the key details and I don't forget to go back and read any of them, but you don't have to in a nonfiction book. If you just had a little bit of time and you only wanted to study one key detail, you would go to the table of contents, read it, and figure out what page you wanted to read. Nonfiction books have a glossary and an index as well. Nonfiction books, the glossary is in the back and the index is in the back. The glossary is like a special dictionary for that book. It tells you the definition or what the words mean. The index will tell us what pages those special words were on. Sometimes nonfiction books have a diagram. Our diagram, they called it Picture an Elephant, and it's on page 20. I think I'm going to start with the glossary in the back and read about the special words that are going to be in this book. I went to page 22 because that's what page the table of contents told me to go to. One of the special words in this book is Africa. It's the second biggest piece of land in the world. Asia is the biggest piece of land in the world. Herd is a word that means a large group of animals that live together. Tusks is a word that means long teeth that stick out from an elephant's mouth. The index in the very back of the book tells me what pages these special words appear on. The, the word Africa is on page 7, and so is the word Asia. The word calves is on page 14. The word herds is on page 14. The word, word sleeping is on page 16. So the index tells me what page I would find those special words on. Hello, elephants. Elephants are big animals. They live in Africa and Asia. So I can look at this photograph and I can find out quite a bit. Elephants live in areas that have a lot of dry grasses, some trees, not lots of trees, it's not a forest, but there's some trees, and there might even be some mountains in the background. So this must be a picture of Africa or a picture of Asia, because that's where elephants live. Where else could you go to see an elephant? Maybe a zoo. Mm -hmm. Elephants have long noses called trunks. Oh, that's a very important key detail. I've always wondered what those parts of them were called. Trunks. Now look, there's two trunks in this picture. Here's one elephant, and here's another elephant. They're touching each other. They're holding each other's trunks. They have big teeth called tusks. So this is their tusk. Now their tusks come out. I don't think they can use them to chew their food. I wonder what they use those for. I hope it'll teach us about that too. Elephant skin is gray. It feels bumpy. Elephant ears are big 
and floppy. What a great photograph they used on this page. They wanted to make sure that we learned about their bumpy skin, about their gray skin, and about their big floppy ears. They really picked a great photograph to go with the words on this page. Elephants eat plants. They use their trunks to get food. Look at that. He's using his great big nose, his trunk, to feed himself. He can't use his hands. He doesn't have any. A baby elephant is called a calf. A calf lives with other elephants in a herd. So a group of elephants is called a herd. And a baby elephant is called a calf. Elephants like to play in the mud. Then they take a bath. Elephants like to sleep a lot too. So what do elephants like to do? What are some key details that you know about elephants and what they like to do? Elephants like to sleep. What else? Elephants like to play in the mud and they can give themselves a bath. This elephant is giving himself a bath. He's using his trunk to do that too. So they use their trunk as a nose to smell they can use their trunk to feed themselves, so it's like a hand. Earlier, we saw them holding each other's trunks, like holding hands, and now we see him using his trunk to give himself a bath. He must get water out of here and then spray it on himself to cool down or to wash off. Wow, the trunk is very important. Goodbye, elephants. Here's a diagram of an elephant. A diagram is a picture that shows us all the parts of something and gives us labels so that we know what those parts are called. This label says skin, and they give us an up-close picture of what his skin looks like. Remember, his skin is gray and bumpy. He has lots of wrinkles. Here's his tail. Here's his trunk and his mouth and his tusk. Here's his ear and his eye. Oh, they gave us a close-up photograph of his eye as well and a close-up picture of his foot. So I know if I was drawing an elephant, I would draw three toenails because he has toenails. He has three of them. What are some of the key details that you learned about elephants from this book? Go tell an adult five things that you learned about elephants, all the key details you can remember that you learned.